Hi, my name is Brianne Ibarra. I am a grad assistant at the Office of Global Engagement, and I'm just here to let you know some five tips while um, living in Japan, because actually back when I was an undergrad, I actually lived in Japan in Tokyo for one semester. So again, here are five tips from me that will help you as you live in Tokyo and study at AGU. So tip number one, start studying Japanese. Um, right now, unfortunately, CBU doesn't offer Japanese here on campus and you won't be able to start actually studying until you're there at AGU, which we highly recommend. So before you go, I wanna you know, let you know, it's in your best interest to go online, look up some free online resources, check out YouTube, especially so you can hear the pronunciations of Japanese words that will be helpful to you. Um, just because even though Tokyo is very expat friendly, there's a lot of um, immigrants and professionals there who speak English and Japanese people even study J uh, English, not Japanese, they study English for six years in school. Um, unfortunately, it just seems a lot of foreigners have trouble communicating in English with Japanese natives. So again, please start to study Japanese before you go. It'll be helpful. Um, and we wanna make sure you have a good experience from beginning to end. So this is one way you could do that. Okay, so tip number two, be adventurous with your food. I know a lot of you might be afraid because you think Japan and you think raw fish, especially sushi. Well, don't worry because Japanese food isn't only sushi. Um, for example, they have lots of different noodle options. Like, of course, I'm sure you are familiar with ramen, but they also have more traditional noodle options like udon, um, soba, and something called somen. There are a lot of ramen places for you to go to, um, not a raw fish in sight. Another thing you might be interested in eating is something called Japanese curry. So if you're a fan of curry, Thai curry, Indian curry, this is something you're gonna enjoy as well. My favorite restaurant when I was there is called Koko Ichibanya. Um, you can find them all over Tokyo. They're very cheap and very delicious. Another option for people too afraid for sushi or um, just <laughs> nervous again about raw fish is going to be rice bowls. So I'm sure you've heard of Yoshinoya. Um, they are very popular with rice bowls. So a rice bowl is just rice on the bottom with some sort of sauteed veggies and meat. So beef, chicken, pork, and my favorite, which is called katsudon. Um, tonkatsu is a breaded pork cutlet and it's put on top of rice with egg and um, katsu sauce. It's very um, comforting. It's like a comfort food. And then, of course, there's much, much more like omurais. Um, there is chirashi, which is raw fish. For those of you looking for the raw fish, it's a raw fish bowl, so like pokey. Um, and even something called okonomiyaki. So if you do some traveling, okonomiyaki is very popular. It's just a savory pancake. Okay, tip number three. So most importantly, I think you should make friends while you're abroad and that's friends with Japanese locals. Um, you're gonna be studying Japanese, hopefully. Again, we highly recommend this. And one way you can practice your Japanese skills is with Japanese natives. So AGU has the chat room, which we hope you get involved in while you're there, where you can learn and um, practice your Japanese speaking skills, maybe even get paid for helping um, others learn English. But you're also going to be interacting with Japanese students at your dorm. So your dorm is gonna put on events. Um, make sure you go to them. That's where you'll be able to intro be introduced to um, Japanese natives you might not have otherwise been introduced to because not all of them attend AGU. Some of them attend other universities. It's really common in Tokyo and Japan and big cities to have private dorms for um, students who attend all different schools in the area. So make sure you go out of your way and don't be shy. Japanese people are very, very friendly, 
but unfortunately in Tokyo, they have sort of a business mentality. Um, they're really trying to get from one place to another, so you won't exactly have a conversation with someone on the train. It's really up to you to engage with them and to gain that important, again, language skills in Japanese, but also um, some cultural exchange, which is one of the biggest benefits of studying abroad. Number four, so explore the country of Japan. I know a lot of times when people go abroad, um, they really want to go outside of the country, but Japan is an island country. So even though Korea and China, Taiwan, they're all relatively close to Japan, um, I think Japan has a lot to offer that in the short time you might be there, um, you should really focus on traveling within the country just to get the most out of the culture and the great experiences you can get that maybe might not be as expensive as trying to go to you know Seoul or um, China or Taiwan so I'm just gonna go over some places in Japan um, and in sorry let me start that over so I'm just gonna go over some places that you can travel in Tokyo. So I know many of you might be, again, worried about money. These are the places you can go to where you won't have to break your bank. So look into going to Akihabara if you're really interested in, um, you know, anime and video games. This place has a lot of Japanese pop culture stores for you to just get lost in. Um, another great place to travel to will be the Ghibli Museum for any of you guys who are um, Studio Ghibli fans. It's a little south of Tokyo, just right outside, but you can get tickets at um, convenience stores like 7-Eleven, and so hopefully you can find a friend who can help you just book this ticket to go one weekend. Another great place to travel to in Tokyo is Sensoji Temple. So if you're looking for more of a um, Edo period architecture and feel, Sensoji Temple is a great place to have some food. They have a lot of food carts um, that you might see at like a festival all year round, so it doesn't have to be a holiday. And they have a big, beautiful temple there for you can so that you can really experience um, Japanese religion known as Shintoism, but also Buddhism. Um, something that I highly recommend you do while you're there in Japan. Final tip for you is the most important one, and that is have fun. You're going to be in Japan. It's going to be a little scary, but remember, um, AGU is there to help you. We're here to help you. Just have an open mind and an open heart, as AGU says, and I think you'll have a great time. All right, good luck.